Hello again, doctors, and welcome back to my channel. In this video for Hayao Miro, we're going to be going over the mnemonic to remember the four aminos of exit for the cranial nerves. This is a Hayao topic first step, and it's super easy to remember, so without further ado, grab some coffee, get comfortable, and let's get started. So with the important letters highlighted in red, the mnemonic goes, Come on, Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Roll over, Sophia. I am in a mood for jug, 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 hey. So let's go through them one by one to make sense of the mnemonic. First up, the C in COM stands for Cobiform Plate, which is the point of exit for cranial nerve 1, the olfactory nerve, which is responsible for our sense of smell. Next, the O in ON stands for Optic Canal, which is the point of exit for cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, which is responsible for our sense of vision. It is also the afferent limb of our pupillary light reflex. Next up, the SRF in SOPHIA stands for superior orbital fissure, which is the point of exit for the next three nerves that we'll talk about. Starting off with cranial nerve 3, ocular motor, which provides motor output to all extraocular muscles except two, superior oblique and lateral rectus. Cranial nerve 3 also carries the autonomic fibers to our pupil, with the parasympathetic preganglionic fibers originating in the edinger westphal nucleus of the midbrain, and postganglionic sympathetic fibers coming from the superior cervical ganglion. Next up, cranial nerve 4, trochlear, takes care of the extraocular muscle, superior oblique, and also exit out the superior orbital fissure. Next up are the three branches of the trigeminal nerve, V1, V2, and V3, which collectively provide sensory information to the face, as well as motor to our muscles of mastication. For V1, the ophthalmic branch, it's our third Sophia, so it exits out the SOF, and V1 is the afferent limb of the corneal reflex. For V2, the maxillary branch, the RO in roll, stands for foramen rotundum, and for V3, the OV in over stands for foramen oval. And the mandibular branch of V3 is going to be the one that has your motor fibers to muscles of mastication. Number six, the abducens nerve is our last Sophia. It exits out the SOF and provides motor to lateral rectus, which abducts our eye. Cranial nerve seven and eight both exit out the IAM, which is the internal acoustic meatus. With cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve providing motor to our entire face, except muscles of mastication, which was taken care of by trigeminal. The facial nerve also provides taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue via corda tympani, with cranial nerve 5 providing the anterior two-thirds with general sensation. And finally, the facial nerve contains the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the superior salivatory nucleus heading to the lacrimal glands, as well as some mandibular and sublingual glands. Cranial nerve 8, again exiting through the IAM, Vestibular cochlear rules hearing and balance. Very simple. Cranial nerve 7 and 8 are in such close proximity that in a pathology, you typically will have combined symptoms of these two nerves. And the last point to note is that cranial nerve 7 is the efferent or motor limb of the corneal reflex. The next three nerves, 9, 10, and 11, all exit out the jugular foramen, starting with cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, which provides somatic motor fibers to the stylopharyngeus muscle, which is in the pharyngeal wall. It also provides taste and general sensation information from the posterior one-third of the tongue, as well as generalized sensation to the palate and tonsils. And finally, it has the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the inferior salivatory nucleus headed to your parotid gland. Next up for cranial nerve 10, which also exits out the jugular foramen, which provides somatic motor to all muscles of the palate and throat, except stylopharyngeus mentioned in cranial nerve 9, as well as one tongue muscle, which is palatoglossius. Anything with the word palato in it is taken care of by vagus. It also provides taste and sensation to the most posterior aspect of the tongue and epiglottis, as well as generalized sensation from the larynx down to the vocal cords. Finally, it has visceral motor and parasympathetic fibers running from the superior two-thirds of the esophagus all the way down to your foregut, so the first part of the duodenum. This includes the heart and lungs. And finally, in terms of reflexes, for the gag reflex, the sensory or afferent limb is carried by cranial nerve 9, and vagus is the efferent or motor limb. And in terms of the cough reflex, the vagus nerve rules both the afferent sensory and efferent motor limbs. Cranial nerve 11, the accessory nerve, provides general somatic motor to the trapezius and sternocleidal mastoid muscles. It is the last one to exit out the jugular foramen. And finally, the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, exits out the hypoglossal canal and innervates all intrinsic tongue muscles except palatoglossius, which, as I said, was taken care of by cranial nerve 10. Next up, I have two examples. So pause the video, take as much time as you need to get your answer, and then after 10 seconds, I will come back with the answer explanation.
the first clue in this question is that he has hearing loss in his left ear. Hearing loss is ipsilateral to the side of the lesion, so so far we are at cranial nerve 8 on the left. The sensitivity to sound is the next clue, especially loud sounds because cranial nerve 7 gives off nerve 2 stapedius, and the stapedius muscle is articulated with the stapes bone and should dampen sound. So that's kind of your first clue into cranial nerve 7. And now it's progressed and he has weakness on the left side of his face, which shows facial droop on PE. So again, we are at cranial nerve 7 and 8 on the left side. The tongue protrusion and uvular deviation being normal rules out cranial nerves 10 and 12. And the pupillary light reflex rules out cranial nerves 2 and 3. With a absent left corneal reflex, your options are V1, which is the sensory or afferent limb, or cranial nerve 7, which is the motor output. And we've already had 7 on our list, confirming that the answer is the left internal acoustic meatus. This MRI is showing the most commonly tested pathology in this instance, which is an acoustic neuroma, aka a vestibular schwannoma, which is typically unilateral, except in cases of neurofibromatosis type 2, in which it's more likely to be bilateral. Now these tend to grow so large that cranial nerve 7 is typically implicated along with cranial nerve 8, not only because of their internal acoustic meatus exit, but also because they exit out the brainstem itself, side by side, at the cerebellopontine angle. The first obvious clue in this question is the monocular vision loss. So that already brings us prechiasmal or perichiasmal. So before the chiasm or lateral to it, you can already rule out the optic tract, LGN, and visual cortex because those would give you a homonymous vision loss. Then we keep going and we see the direct and consensual response is absent in the right eye. So our two options are cranial nerve 2 on the right or cranial nerve 3 on the right. Cranial nerve 2 being more obvious because she also has vision loss. But to verify that it's not cranial nerve 3 on the right, the efferent limb, we see that the left con direct and consensual responses are normal, which rules out cranial nerve 3 on the right. This leaves us with cranial nerve 2 on the right, which exits out the right optic canal. Okay, doctor, that wraps up this video. I really hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure you smash that huge thumbs up just down below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to my channel if you want to see more videos on high-yield neural topics. Good luck studying, and I will see you on the next one.